So it's nice that we get an A on this report card, but the question is, how did we perform? So for those of you familiar with how we construct our equity model and we're disciplined about this, we allocate 45% of our equity stock-related assets to the growth-style investing, think Google, 45% to the value-style of investing, think Berkshire Hathaway, which is actually our largest holding right now, 10% to what I call special situations. So those are you know, positions that we'll take in areas of the market where we think we can add excess performance without putting sort of undue risk in the portfolio. Growth managers, as you saw on the slide before, actually did very well relative to the index. So our growth managers as a whole were up 20.09%. I will point out that a J's performance in your Wasatch Global Opportunities Fund was actually 26%, and so he was our highest returning manager last year. Thank you. Do that again, if you could. Um, in terms of the value side of the equation, again, value had a tougher uh, road to hoe last year, but they were still up better than 11%. On the special situation side, our European investment did extremely well, and that was 5% of that, that slice. The other 5% was an aggressive value manager who's doing well this year, but last year was really heavy into energy, and energy didn't perform well. So we split the difference. We were up nearly 15% in special situations. So the bogey the benchmark, the S&P 500, was up 5, 15, excuse me, 0.98% last year. We were up 15, 55 gross, 14, 25 net. So we got somewhere between 90 and 95% of the market's return. Um, taking a look back, you know, we've been doing this for a while. I don't know how many State of the Unions we've done, but I do remember the first one I had like four slides. So we've really come a long way together. Um, so over the last 10 and a half years, we've been able to compound on the stock side of the ledger at about 7.8% a year um, gross, net about 6.6, while the S&P 500's done about 5.6%. So even though we trailed slightly in the past year, our long-term rates of return are certainly intact. All right, let's talk a little bit about bonds. Um, on the fixed income model, in a rising rate environment, right, you got to get pretty creative, and we've done that. So 60% of our portfolio is allocated to what we call multi-sector. That means managers that just have wide open playbooks. They can basically own anything they want to in the bond market. And we have 20% allocated to what we call global macro. For you bond people, that's kind of a short duration portfolio, somewhat currency arbitrage related. Um, and then we had a high quality, high yield manager that we released recently, but last year that was 20% of our portfolio. So the multi-sector funds were up on average 10.5%. Our global macro uh, position was up nearly 4 And then the high yield side of the equation was up a little better than 10 The benchmark, the Barclays Aggregate Bond Market Index, was up 4.2%. We did 9.13 gross and 8.60 net. So overall, a very strong year in the bond portfolio. And we need it because we're trailing the benchmark a little bit over a long period of time, and that's because we haven't owned a treasury since 2007, and treasuries have been good. But now they're bad, so I think we'll catch up here quickly. So WNA gross over the last 10 and a half years have been compounding at 5.25%, net about 4.7, and again, the index at about 5.5. So over a long period of time, we've been very competitive, and we've earned great returns. Now, for those of you who know me, you know that I'm very benchmark-centric. And I'm very benchmark-centric because you've got to have an enemy, and you've got to wake up every morning wanting to defeat them. And so my enemy is the S&P 500 and the Barclays Aggregate Bond Market Index. Now, unfortunately, I think I've transferred onto some of you my obsession because every once in a while I'll get a call and it'll be, David, you know, you didn't outperform this week or you didn't outperform this month, and uh, as if I don't know that, right? Um, <laughs> And so I think that, that maybe I've confused you all a little bit about what the true benchmark really is. So I want to go back to rebenchmarking a little bit. And by the way, Don mentioned our, 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 our relationship with wealth access. Part of that philosophy is I'd much rather that you all pay attention on a daily basis to your net worth than the move in the market because your net worth doesn't move around nearly as much and it doesn't you know, make you emotionally reactive and so that's another strategy there. So that's part of my rebenchmarking effort. Here's another part of it. So if you look at what average individual investor returns, recognizing that nobody in here is average, I'm not accusing anybody of being average, but if you look at average investor returns over the last 20 years, this is a study done by Dalbar that I've quoted in a newsletter, I think. 
Okay, over the last 20 years, the S&P 500 annualizes at about 8% a year. The average equity fund investor, the go-it-alone investor, has been compounding money a little less than 4%. Why is that? Because they make poor timing decisions. They tend to buy high and sell low. When the market's going in a general direction, they actually do pretty well, but they make abysmal market timers, and so that's where they end up getting whipsawed. It's the same on the bond side of the equation as well. So you can see that the benchmark index is up whatever that is, 6.5% or so. The average bond market investor is not even participating, and I think the returns that you're seeing of 1% mean they're probably just sitting in money market funds. So the reality is my benchmark is the S&P 500. That's why I wake up and get excited about duking it out with on a daily basis. But for our clients, the benchmark is really what kind of returns that they'd be receiving in a, in a sort of go-it-alone fashion. So that's part of the reframing. I, I don't want to obsess about benchmarks with you as much as I do, but that's what I do.